The American mind possesses specific knowledge, not just an attitude. You must remember the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, and the Bible, along with stories of the first colonists, the founding, and the pioneer experience. America is a nation founded on ideas, that American citizenship depends upon intellectual clarity and engagement, um, and a sense of grasp of the nation's founding principles. Um, uh, we, uh, we are born Americans, but in a sense we become Americans. Public relations has mushroomed into a $200 billion a year industry, with PR flax in the United States now outnumbering journalists. Propaganda has become the primary means by which the wealthy communicate with the rest of society. Whether selling a product, a political candidate, a law, or a war, seldom do the powerful deliver messages to the public before consulting their colleagues in the public relations industry. You see a news show, you watch 60 Minutes or a Fox program or whatever it is, you tend to give more credibility to what you're told is journalism. If an advertisement comes on, hopefully you tend to be more skeptical of that because obviously somebody put an awful lot of money into crafting this slick TV ad and airing it. But what you probably never suspect is that that news story you just watched was also crafted by a company given to the TV station or network with the understanding that they would put their own logos on it, identify it as real journalism, and air it. Private charity, and you might say government charity, any, any kind of action that, that sort of relieves people's distress a little bit without changing the system, maintains the system. In fact, that is the way the American system, which is very exploitative and very unfair, that's the way the American system has been maintained for all these, these centuries, really, by giving people a little bit and giving enough people, just enough, to prevent them from breaking out in open rebellion. The America that the super patriots claim to love is neither a geographical totality, nor is it a vast population, nor is it really a history or culture. As far as I can see, their America, and they say love America, is an ideological abstraction. It's an emotive symbol that can be embodied in other abstract symbols like the flag. A people who know who they are don't worry about being number one. A people who are in touch with the deeper values of social justice and democracy don't get a number one thrill from stomping on a tiny nation. A people who seek friendship and cooperation with other peoples don't need to lord it over other nations and outshine them. Such a people don't have to find reassurances in themselves by looking at or imagining the deficiencies of others. And they don't feel threatened by the accomplishments and strengths of other people. They don't panic when they fail to win the most gold medals but most medals at the Olympics. These are killer devices designed by man to kill men, women, children, the elderly, to destroy homes and memories and dreams and livelihoods and neighborhoods to destroy. What we do, which is more frightening than coming up with these weapons, is it really no big deal? It's ability to morally justify what we do, to, to pay homage, to, to pay tribute to people who have devoted their lives to killing people. The income tax goes to the general fund of the United States federal government, which means that it goes to a lot of things that are quite controversial. Uh, for instance, a lot of that money goes to uh, military spending. To make people feel good about the taxes that they pay, you really need two things. You need a sense of community, that there's an us, and you need a sense of representation, right? That government represents that us. And there's a wonderful quotation that expresses this from Matthew Valley, from 1518. When the safety of one's country wholly depends on the decision to be taken, no attention should be paid either to justice or injustice to kindness or cruelty, or to it being praiseworthy or ignominious. Moral relativism, situational ethics, call it what you want. We're, we are the best, which makes us the most dangerous. 
See, animals don't do that. Animals don't kill each other. Animals, you know, when they meet another animal from the same, you know, species, they'll, they'll you know, make a, you know, some kind of a, they'll roll over on their back or they'll, you know, do whatever they want to do. And that's the sign like, hey, I'm exposing my juggler. Leave me alone. And, and they don't kill each other. Not us. No, 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 no. We kill each other. And we will laud it and applaud it. Super patriotic morality is an inversion of individual morality. Conscience, morality, executive thinking, but also judgment frontal lobe, prefrontal right here. And those people who do not have the ability to access that, to access, I should say that, those people we call psychopaths, people whose head and heart are disconnected. So some people who are either born that way, maybe they're psychopaths or they're sociopaths and are conditioned to that, or we can just cut to the chase by using our ability to create situations through morality, religion, training, patriotism, frame of reference, moral relativism, situational ethics, uh, philosophy, theology, indoctrination, mob, and herd mentality and psychology, like Le Bon and Kierkegaard and Nietzsche and Bernays and everybody. You know, a question could be raised. What's so important about the state existing and growing and continuing and expanding and flourishing, whatever else? That's taken as self-justifying. In fact, that question would be considered unpatriotic.